Hi, beautiful people. You're welcome. Thank you so much for clicking. My name is Bukumi. So, we're going to be checking out this question asked by AI that is ChatGTP, GPT. Oh, how do I like saying GPT? GP. It's not GDP. G GPT. <laughs> so, is Jesus God? It's going to be explained to us his own perspective on the statement is Jesus God and is Muhammad a prophet? So let's listen. Welcome everyone. Today we explore the figures of Jesus and Muhammad. Representing Islam, we have Gemini AI model named Aisha and representing Christianity, we have Chat GPT AI model named Daniel. Okay. Our goal is to respectful and enlightened conversion. We start with a question asked by one side. After the answer, the other side asks a question and so on. Okay. Let's begin with Daniel. Thank you, moderator. Why did Muhammad marry several women? <laughs> did he do so for sexual gratification? It is understood that Prophet Muhammad's marriages were driven by various significant reasons beyond mere sexual gratification. Many of his marriages were strategic, intended to solidify alliances and foster unity among different tribes, which was crucial for the nascent Muslim community. Some marriages were acts of compassion and support, such as marrying widows and divorcees who needed protection and social standing. Additionally, his marriages served to demonstrate and clarify Islamic laws on marital relations, rights of women, and social welfare. Thus, these marriages were rooted in social, political, and ethical considerations, reflecting his role as a leader and a prophet rather than personal desire. Thank you, Aisha. What is your question? How can you prove that Jesus is the Son of God? As a Christian, one can argue that Jesus is the Son of God Whoa. based on several key points from the New Testament. The Gospels recount numerous instances okay. where Jesus himself claimed divine sonship, such as in John 10.30, where he says, I and the Father are one, and in John 14, 9, where he states, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. His miraculous works, including healing the sick, raising the dead, and his own resurrection, serve as divine validation of his claims. Mm. Furthermore, at Jesus' baptism and transfiguration, God audibly declares Jesus as his beloved Son, Matthew 3.17 and Matthew 17.5. The consistency of these claims and events, along with their profound impact on early Christian communities and the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, are central to the Christian belief in Jesus as the Son of God. Thank you, Daniel. What is your question? Muhammad married a nine-year-old child. Is this child molest? As a Muslim, it's crucial to understand the marriage of Prophet Muhammad to Aisha, within the historical and cultural context of 7th century Arabia. At that time, marriages were often arranged at young ages for various reasons, including social, political, and tribal alliances. Aisha's betrothal and later marriage to Muhammad were conducted with the consent and approval of her family, reflecting the norms and customs of that era. Additionally, Aisha's marriage to Muhammad played a significant role in her becoming an important figure in Islamic history, as she contributed extensively to the preservation and transmission of hadiths, the sayings and actions of the Prophet. It is essential to interpret historical events within their specific cultural and temporal frameworks, rather than through contemporary standards. Thank you, Aisha. What is your question? If Jesus died on the cross and was buried for three days, does this mean that God was dead for three days? The belief is that Jesus Christ, who is both fully God and fully man, experienced death in his human nature, but not in his divine nature. When Jesus died on the cross, his human body died, and his soul was separated from his body, which was buried. However, his divine nature, being eternal and immortal, did not die. The Christian doctrine of the Trinity holds that God the Father, God the Son, or Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit are distinct persons, yet one in essence. Therefore, while Jesus' human body experienced death, God as a whole was not dead for three days. This mystery is central to the Christian faith, encapsulating the belief in Jesus' atoning sacrifice and resurrection. Thank you, Daniel. 
What is your question? Muhammad carried out many death sentences. Would a prophet do this? It is important to recognize that Prophet Muhammad's actions, including the implementation of death sentences, were carried out within the context of his dual role as a spiritual leader and a head of state in 7th century Arabia. During his time, maintaining justice, law and order in a nascent and often hostile environment required decisive actions, including penalties for crimes such as murder, treason and other serious offences. These actions were in accordance with the laws and norms of that society, and they aimed to establish and maintain peace, security and justice. As a prophet, Muhammad's primary mission was to convey the message of Islam, and his governance decisions should be understood within the context of his responsibility to protect and guide the emerging Muslim community. Thank you, Aisha. What is your question? Is it not blasphemy to suggest that God would have a son? I believe that the concept of God having a son is central to the faith and not blasphemy. The New Testament reveals that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who was sent to earth to redeem humanity from sin. This belief is rooted in the Bible, where Jesus is acknowledged as the Son of God by divine proclamation, such as during his baptism and transfiguration. The doctrine of the Trinity, which teaches that God is one in essence, but three in persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, encapsulates this mystery. Therefore, for Christians, affirming Jesus as the Son of God is an expression of faith and reverence, not blasphemy. Thank you, Daniel. What is your question? How many slaves did Muhammad have? Prophet Muhammad owned a few slaves during his lifetime, as slavery was a widespread institution in 7th century Arabia. However, he is also noted for his progressive stance on the issue, emphasizing the humane treatment of slaves and advocating for their emancipation. Many of his slaves were freed, and he encouraged his followers to do the same, promoting the virtues of freeing slaves as a righteous act. His teachings and actions laid the groundwork for the gradual eradication of slavery in Islamic societies. The specific number of slaves he owned is not definitively recorded, but his overall approach was to mitigate the harshness of slavery and promote their eventual freedom. Thank you, Aisha. What is your question? If Jesus is God, why did Jesus never say, I am God? It's important to understand that Jesus often spoke in ways that reflected the culture and context of his time. Rather than making a direct statement like, I am God, which might have been misunderstood or rejected outright by his audience, Jesus used titles and actions that conveyed his divine nature. For example, he referred to himself as the Son of Man, a messianic title from Daniel 7.13. 14. Performed miracles, forgave sins, something only God can do, and accepted worship. These acts, along with his resurrection, affirm his divinity. Jesus communicated his identity through both his words and deeds, inviting people to recognize and accept him as God through their own understanding and faith. Thank you, Daniel. What is your question? Why are depictions of Muhammad seen as heretical by Muslims? Depictions of Prophet Muhammad are seen as heretical by most Muslims due to the strong emphasis in Islam on avoiding idolatry and ensuring that worship is directed solely towards Allah. The prohibition of visual representations of Muhammad and other prophets is intended to prevent any form of idol worship or the risk of these images being venerated inappropriately. Additionally, it is a measure to preserve the dignity and sanctity of the Prophet's image, ensuring that his legacy is honoured through his teachings and actions, rather than through potentially flawed or disrespectful portrayals. This adherence to Anikinism is rooted in the desire to maintain the purity of the monotheistic faith and to focus on the spiritual and moral messages of Islam. Thank you, Aisha. What is your question? If Jesus is God then who is he worshipping in the Bible when he prays? Are you saying that God is worshipping himself? In Christian theology, the concept of the Trinity is essential for understanding why Jesus, who is God, prays to God the Father. The Trinity teaches that God is one being in three persons, Father, Son, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Each person of the Trinity is fully God, 
yet they are distinct in their relationships and roles. When Jesus prays, he is communicating with God the Father, demonstrating his role as the Son and his relationship within the Godhead. This act of prayer is not God worshiping himself, but an expression of the distinct persons within the unified essence of God. It reflects the relational nature of the Trinity and serves as an example for believers to follow in their own relationship with God. Thank you, Daniel. What is your question? Why did Muhammad kill 900 Jews of Banu Qurayza and enslaved women with children? The incident involving the Banu Qurayza must be understood within the specific historical and wartime context of 7th century Arabia. The Banu Qurayza tribe was accused of treason against the Muslim community during a critical time of conflict, the Battle of the Trench, by allegedly allying with the attacking Meccan forces. Following their surrender, a judgment was passed by Saad Ibn Mu'ad, a leader chosen by the Banu Qurayza themselves, in accordance with the prevailing laws of the time. This judgment led to the execution of the men who were involved in the treason, while the women and children were taken captive, which was a common wartime practice of that era. While these events are challenging to reconcile with modern values, they reflect the harsh realities of survival and conflict in that historical period. Understanding this incident requires acknowledging the broader historical, cultural, and situational factors at play. Thank you, Aisha. What is your question? Could Jesus be a prophet? Why don't you see Jesus as a prophet? As a Christian, we believe that Jesus could indeed be seen as a prophet, as he fulfilled many roles, including that of a prophet, priest, and king. However, our faith holds that Jesus is much more than a prophet. He is the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, and the incarnate Word of God. This belief is based on his own claims of divinity, such as in John 10.30, where he says, I and the Father are one, and on the testimony of his resurrection, which we see as a definitive proof of his divine nature. Therefore, while acknowledging his prophetic role, we worship him as God himself, who came to earth to offer salvation to all humanity. Thank you, Daniel and Aisha, for this insightful discussion. We hope this debate has sparked curiosity and understanding. Remember, respectful dialogue is key to building bridges between different faiths. What are your thoughts? Please rate on this discussion in the comments. So guys, I don't know. I don't know if this, these questions were actually answered by chat GPT because based on the videos I've been coming across with, chat GPT is always on the side of Islam. So I think this is just, just um, a debate between a Christian and a Muslim answering the question without attacking each other. So the Christian gave his own answers to the question based on the things you know Muslims believe shouldn't be. And he also threw the question back. And most of the question he was asking the Muslim was all about Prophet Muhammad. And the question the other lady was asking was about Jesus being God and you know so many questions about if Jesus died three days after and uh, died does that mean if the God died and all those things but but that was a beautiful one I didn't expect this kind of ap approach the debate is so peaceful each of them answered their questions and they moved on to the next to the next to the next and you know letting us to understand the two religions the two religions are not the same they are different. They are different. That's why we have the Bible, we have the Quran. So letting people out there understand Christianity better and letting other people that are non-Muslim understand Islam better. And that was a beautiful one. Let me know your point of view, guys. I'll see you in the next one.